Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. I'm in the shop of XJ Auto, and uh, we are uh, finishing work on the drivetrain of this 1973 uh, Jag uh, E-Type Series 3 V12, and uh, this is the third installment of a video uh, a video series that I'm doing, uh, just documenting the installation and some of the work done. Okay, so let's turn this camera around, and I will. Um, describe uh, what we've done so far. All right, well, the engine is coming along quite nicely uh, and, and in an era uh, where uh, even the engines now that are accessible on modern cars are shrouded in plastic. It is kind of nice to see <laughs> an engine properly presented. So I'll give you a slow walk around on it. And then I can describe some of the new parts that uh, were put on, okay? And uh, so, uh, well, we've, uh, we've uh, had all of the uh, brake system components uh, uh, rebuilt by White Post. Um, we have exchanged the um, Stromberg carburetors for SUs, which are a whole lot uh, prettier. Um, we have uh, ditched the um, heavy and ugly uh, uh, steel radiator and catch tank, catch tank for aluminum ones uh, with extra cooling, so extra uh, separately um, activated uh, electric cool, cooling fans, so we've done that. Um, we have given the car, you know, a new coil and a new distributor and uh, a new uh, gear reduction starter. Um, we have recently, and you can see it in there, but we have put stainless headers in, and I can show you separate um, uh, photographs of that. Rebuilt the rack, rebuilt the suspension, of course. Uh, those headers just look great. Uh, the intake manifolds have been refinished. They're just sitting on the car. We haven't attached those yet. And then we're just working out the deletion of the air pump and the smogs. To give you an idea of what, what the car looked like before, I can flash that picture up and I can also show you some of the parts that came off. So the starter, the, uh, the header tank, these are the um, air injection hoses, the uh, cast iron um, uh, manifold, etc. One of which cracked, uh, which which did necessitate the, uh, the, the new parts. Uh, heat shields, the alternator, distributor. Uh, those are the Strongberg carbs. Water pump, and then those are the, uh, the air cleaner assemblies. And then we can see the, uh, the old exhaust, which isn't in, in terrible shape, but uh, I think you'll agree the stainless one looks better. I'll flash a picture underneath the car. And uh, I'll show you the back of this radiator here. Um, with these. Okay, so we modernized this. Um, there's quite a few parts that are taken off of it. There's quite a few parts that are replaced with uh, items that are a lot lighter, like the radiator and the exhaust. So I think that um, uh, by switching over all of these parts from these ones, um, uh, we're saving probably something like 100 pounds right, off, right on the front wheels. So I'm sure there's 20 or 30 pounds on the exhaust. I'm sure the radiator is another 20 or 30 pounds. And, uh, you know, I think there's probably 40 uh, made up by, by the rest of the stuff we're taking off. So I think that, that 100 pounds right on the front axle is uh, enough that uh, you'll feel the difference. Um, and, and it should run cooler and, and it should sound better. So I think, I think everybody can agree. I hope so. <laughs> but that looks pretty good. And when we get it all cleaned up, uh, the, uh, and, and, and we open the bonnet and show this off, uh, I think everybody will be suitably, suitably impressed. It looks like a proper engine, doesn't it? All right. Um, in addition to that, um, 
we had the dash top restored and then we uh, bought all new wiring harnesses and uh, rewired the dash. Um, after the uh, car is running and, and tuned and so on, it's going to get the upholstery. We have an olive upholstery matching the, um, uh, the original and, the, uh, and, and some of the trim, like the sill panels and the, uh, and, and the trim behind the seats is vinyl. But now when we're restoring it, nobody makes olive vinyl. They make tan vinyl, they make black vinyl for the car, but they don't make olive vinyl, it's just too rare. So the only choices we had to redo the vinyl were to have like, you know, 30 meters of it made at, you know, five or six thousand dollars. And it's actually cheaper to dye additional hides in olive matching the seat. So this, this car will wind up with a complete leather interior, which it never would have had from the factory the all the vinyl would have been made to look like leather but it wasn't leather and like i said if it was a rolls or an aston it would have had full leather so this will be a little bit of an upgrade from stock um, we had the fuel tank i'm not sure where that is but so we had that all rebuilt and flushed out and so on and uh all in the fitting so this this car is turning out to uh well basically it's a, it's a ground up restoration and we also have wire wheels, which probably will be the last thing to come on. All of the fasteners from the subframe and so on are new. And, uh, well, there's no, uh, no corners cut on this car. It'll be, it'll be lovely and in a great period color. Okay, so that's the progress so far. Uh, next step is to get it running properly, then the upholster shop, then uh, finish the body, the body work. Uh, and put the windscreen on and the new top on and, and then we're, we should be good to go. Okay, thank you very much. Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. And, uh, you know, we're probably 80% done this uh, 1973 Jaguar E-Type Series 3 V12. Thank you very much. Have a good day.